Hello my lovelies, Rob here again from Kickback Garage. Today we've got loads to do. Um, yeah, I'm not going to say anything. I'm going to send the intro. Grab yourself a coffee. Messing around with these cameras, battery is going flat. I'm a clear to them a rang, all the sprung in log of villa come under talk. In your novice back out to other forty flock for what to do or draw. Can we phone? Can I send them come to us and to cover so we are the brother last summer? Right, so I've got loads of things uh, going on at the garage at the moment. I've been really, really busy. And if you wonder why it's so dark, <laughs> I'm going to show you now. Last night, my son's wreck, he was uh, in the garage and installed some fancy lights. So I'm really looking forward to see how that looks. Ta-da! Hey, <laughs> I'm really, really pleased with that. Um, my son, uh, he's uh, started work as a trainee electrician and uh, he started practicing that at home. <laughs> and uh, got a hold of some uh, really nice LED uh, lights. I was so fed up of uh, the old-fashioned lights that I had. I had to change out the bulbs constantly and constantly flickering and that very dull yellow light. But anyway, <laughs> the lights are in. So that, that is the first stage of me trying to uh, do something about the garage. It's such a mess in here. I really, really want to sort this out one time and for one time and all. But the first thing uh, I need to do, or the big thing that I'm going to do today, is put the newly built engine into the Golden Boy Lambretta. Right, since last time I uh, talked to you, I, had, uh, I have had a visitor from Stavanger and we put the other RT195 uh, engine into his scooter. A uh, few niggles there, uh, strobe the timing, uh, clutch was slipping a little bit, I to adjust the clutch, and then we sent him off on his merry way. And that means that I can now um, complete, hopefully today, I'm really hoping that I can complete the uh, Golden Boy Lambretta. And here is the engine uh, built. What I want to do is uh, just run you through the specs of it. This is just SIL, Indian SIL engine block. And we have fit a new uni hub. I have shimmed the gearbox. And we have put on one of those uh, really fancy Casa Performance end plates. The lovely thing about the Casa Performance end plate is, uh, I'll throw some pictures up here, is the fact that if you don't fit the um, dowels and you uh, tighten it down onto the end box and don't fit in the Christmas tree or the gear cluster, that means that while you're shimming your gearbox, you can actually, as soon as you've loosened the nuts for the end plate, you can just uh, pull it out with your fingers using those two, uh, the two holes that actually uh, are there for enabling shimming of a five-speed gearbox. That was really cool. That went together really nicely. Um, I have fit an RT-225 on this. We have uh, kept his old Mazzuccelli crankshaft. That was in really good nick, so that was good. We have a standard uh, clutch in this and a fit... BGM plates and uh, new uh, friction plates, so that was good. Uh, what else have we done? Yeah, loads of little upgrades, uh, cast performance, uh, pull down uh, chain tensioner, and uh, just really tidied it up. I have this in in this particular case. I have fit a um, Casa Lambretta uh, inlet manifold because the uh, BGM was empty, but that seems nice. Uh, the only thing that I'm worried about today is, let me turn the camera around, is the fact, as you can see, Golden Boy Lambrette area, he has got a mid-range fuel tank and the cutout is on the opposite side. Now I've bought a Casa Performance offset cones and an engine bar. So what I'm hoping is that I can push that enough far enough forward, forward so that it doesn't come in contact with the uh, mid-range fuel tank because I really want to keep that and that would be a massive setback if it doesn't fit uh, with that fuel tank. And as you know, mid-range fuel tanks can be a real pain to, uh, to fit. 
So the first thing I did with this uh, scooter off camera is, as you see, I have fit a uh, center stand. Woohoo! Now, the complete nightmare about this, let's uh, go and have a look a little bit further. I'm not sure if you can see it. It's quite hard to see, but uh, I'm going to explain anyway. When I was going to fit this uh, center stand, Series 2s, they have a bracket that is uh, welded at the factory to the uh, main strut so they can fit your center stand too. Uh, they weren't there. <laughs> they just weren't there. There was, I don't know, someone's taken them off. That's terrible. Or they've had some damage or something. So what I did have to do is use the Series 3 type J-clips. And I noticed, which <laughs> this is a good idea really, um, I noticed on the last build on the TV 175 that I put together, uh, that was the um, that was a, a newer uh, 1961 model, and that used actually used the uh, series uh, three method of the J clips under there. So what I had to do, I had to uh, drill holes and drill holes on the backside. So the first thing I'm going to do before I uh, fit this motor, I, I need to uh, dress those holes with uh, some uh, anti-rust corrosion uh, paint. And then I'm going to hopefully fit the engine and I'm going to change the cables and sort out some uh, cosmetics. And I'm really, really hoping that by the end of the day, I can fire this thing up uh, and uh, check the timing. So let's get cracking. For some uh, weird and wonderful reason, the um, engine was fighting me all the way in, but now it's in. And the moment of truth here really is um, the carb and that mid-range tank. But what I have to do first is change out some jets here, most notably the uh, flood jet. I like to fit 350s in these. I, I don't, to tell you the truth, I don't really, <laughs> don't really think it make any difference if you fit a 350 or a 1050 because the whole point of this is as soon as the um, float ball is full, I've got a bit of a sticker on there. <laughs> uh, as soon as the float ball is full, this needle will buck the jet and uh, you're good to go. So it's just a sort of a, an insurance so that you, your float board doesn't go empty. Now this carb is not what I normally fit. I've uh, tried one of these on a mid scooter and uh, it's uh, it's worked really well. The only, the, yeah, which I'll tell you what it is. It's a y, YSM carb, which is basically a PHBH uh, 30 copy. And uh, they are really nice quality and about half the price. <laughs> so it'll be interesting to see if I get a good tick over with this. But the nice thing about it, all the jets on the YSN, uh, you can swap them out with uh, original Delotto jets. 
I think uh, the only difference is something about the pin. If you can see, maybe not, you can see there. The pin for the slide down the, down the barrel here is slightly taller than uh, the Dillo uh, version. So if you want to change the slide, then you have to modify that a little bit. But I'm going to keep the original slide on this, which is a 40, I think. 50, 40. It's uh, 40. And I'm going to change the needle to a... The atomizer is an AS266. Six. And we're going to be using our trusty X13 needle. Second clip from top. And uh, once I've put this together again, because as you can hear, I'm not really that good at the old uh, multitasking. <laughs> once I've put this together, we'll see if this will fit with that mid-range fuel tank. Right, another thing I want to mention is uh, the fact that I've also overhauled the fork on this. I've uh, fit BGM 110, 10% uh, uh, stronger springs. And uh, when I remove the original springs from this, the, um, oh, what's it called? The older springs, they were uh, about half a centimeter shorter. So they've uh, definitely uh, had their last days. And I changed the uh, rubber buffers. Right, so this is the moment of truth. I have positioned, that's the nice thing about these uh, Castle Performance engine bars, is that you can uh, move the engine. And what I've done is, um, just by simply turning the, uh, the bar, so you move the engine cones uh, while they're stuck in the scooter, which is nice. And what I've done, I've positioned it down into the lowest position. And I'm really, really hoping I've got enough room in the carb here, uh, enough room for the carb here, so that I don't have to change out the tank. Yeah, so I just had to back out the car for my wife. I don't understand that. Uh, she took the same driver's lessons lessons that I did, but uh, apparently after, uh, yeah. So hopefully, oh, it's a bit tight, man. It's a bit tight. Oh my goodness, what's going on? Ouch. There. Oh, nice one. That was that was absolutely brilliant. So that means we uh, don't have to change change the tank. That fits nicely. What you got to remember here is uh, when the engine uh, suspension compresses the rear suspension, the car will actually move down because your pivot point is here. And that gives me plenty of clearance there. The only thing, the strange thing is, on um, the BGM manifolds that I've used for the last two builds, the carb, I think, sits slightly more over to the left. And you have to have it at a bit of, a, bit of an angle to avoid, your, um, to avoid your silent blocks. But this sits in the op sort of the opposite directions. It's sloping slightly to the right. Now, that could give me some issues when it comes to fitting the throttle cable. And I can see now as well that the, um, oh, what's it called, fuel tap, ha I have to move that slightly, in, a little bit more inwards. Now I've got enough room on the tap itself that's sticking out about a, a centimeter to move it closer to the frame. But otherwise, that's pretty good. And now that I've got the engine in, I was able to put the scooter on my workbench so that when I change the cables now, this is why the reason why I've avoided changing the cables because I don't want to work on my knees. <laughs> right, that as you can see is the engine in place. It's been a bit of a marathon today actually. I got the uh, horncast back in place, headset top. I have to fit the light, I forgot that. <laughs> but uh, what I thought I'd do now is... Um, Throw in some petrol and uh, take it off the ramp and see if she will start. Right, as per usual, I'm going to just fill a little bit of petrol 
just make sure that uh, I fit a new fuel tap, you see. I just want to make sure that that thing isn't leaking. It's looking good up to now. Because the more fuel you put in, <laughs> the more you have to take out again when you uh, discover some sort of leak. Right, that should be enough to get us started at least. Isn't that odd that the uh, petrol cap goes, <laughs> goes the opposite way? All right, let's have a look at this. No leaky petrol, turn the petrol tap on. No leaky carb. Filling up nicely there. Right, let's get it off this bench and uh, see if she'll start. <laughs> right, I've poked her ass out. Oh, it's cold out here. And I, I'm really hoping this starts so they can have a bit of a brap, a bit of a brap tomorrow because uh, it is going to snow on Monday. Right, that's, is that everything? That's the chalk on, that's the, yeah. Just let me kick it through a couple of times. They're always a bit stiff, aren't they, at the start? Right, let's see if we can uh, start her up. Oh, well, something, something happened there. Kickstart is taking a bit too far down, so I'm going to have to adjust the ramp. Will she start? Will she buggery? Be nice if I could get a fast tick over so that I can strobe it. That's really odd to see, probably on the camera, but that's actually spot on. me that was just so cold oh man that was cold well that's been a long day for sure definitely uh, but we can certainly say that this is a wrap um, she rides beautifully had a bit of a spin up and down the road gleaming cold it's minus one today snow coming tomorrow so no chance of a uh, better test ride on her uh, one little niggle I had was uh, the fact that the handlebar isn't lined up with the front wheel, so it felt like it was riding a bit skew with. So, uh, and, and that's a bit odd, isn't it? You would have thought with the Spanish uh, front turning front mug, mug guard that um, that that'd be uh, the easy job. Never mind. Uh, so I'll adjust that, and we'll call it a day. And don't forget, if you uh, like this kind of stuff, <laughs> do the old subscribe. Give me a little thumbs up. If you want to support the channel, you can always buy me a coffee or grab yourself a t-shirt. And I'll see you all in the next one. ta -ra.